Thanks for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Mervyn Matthew. Coming up, government's apprenticeship program continues to have a positive impact on the lives of nationals. GIS's Colette Ambo will bring us a report on a contemporary art exhibition now on at the Dominica Grammar School. And the Dominica Cancer Society gives back to the Ministry of Health. Stay tuned for these and other stories right after the break. The black sitatoka fungus can survive on banana and plantain leaves even after they have been cut from the tree. Farmers and hucksters are encouraged to use alternate cushioning material when moving produce from farm to the market. Do not use banana and plantain leaves as cushioning. It is against the law to move banana and plantain trash from the field. Obey the law and stop the spread of black sitatoka today. Thank you for staying with us. The government's national employment program continues to have a positive impact on the lives of nationals across the country. Through the apprenticeship component of the program, several individuals are gainfully employed while learning new skills. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Employment Minister Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, and Honorable Alvin Bernard, who is the DLP representative for the Roseau Central constituency, visited a stone cutting project in Roseau. Ten young men are employed on the project and are being trained by Gavin Xavier. As far as we're going, I think we can make progress. The boys cannot correspond in properly, and everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. Right now, I would say we're getting along quite well. We work as a team, so we're getting through. Honorable Alvin Bernard is pleased with the progress made thus far on the project. The skill of um, stone cutting is something that we were very anxious well, that, was, uh, that might have been getting away from us. And we thought the, through the National Employment Program, we could, uh, as we say, kill two birds with one stone create employment and training opportunities because this internship program is actually a training activity uh, and so we, we're providing training, uh, temporary employment but of course enhancing the skills of the uh, uh, beneficiaries of that program so that they themselves can move on into the world of work with newly acquired skills. Meantime, Employment Minister Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre is looking forward to further expansion of the apprenticeship program. I look forward to the, uh, my ministry further expanding in terms of getting more and more young folks on board in terms of learning this art, in terms of modern, modernizing it so that we can improve on Roseau and really keep Roseau in, in the present way it looks in terms of modernizing it but keeping the rustic old aspect of Roseau which I think we can sell as one of the only cities in the Caribbean where there's a river flowing for it. We have beautiful buildings, our church we just saw being rebuilt and reinforced and of course using the stone itself in terms of our cobblestones and the various aspects of what we want to do in this part of um, Roseau. So we're very happy to be here. It's costing about in excess of about $80,000 so far. We have 10 men here, we have 10 on the high street area, so we're looking at 20 young men. And what we want to do from there, as I say, is keep expanding and training more and more folks in terms of some of that. And other traditional type things we used to do before that we're no longer doing, we can reintroduce our young people in learning this skill so we can pass it on. In other news, as part of Law Week 2014, a guest lecturer of regional distinction was brought in to address the Justice Telford Judges Memorial Lecture on Thursday evening. The lecture, titled Into the Future with the Constitution, the role of the Caribbean Court of Justice, focused on highlighting Dominica's constitution in light of CCJ reform. The subject is said to be of both domestic and regional concern. Dr. Francis met with the media on Thursday morning. Are we going to nurture and build our self-respect that we are going to stop running to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council and instead settle among ourselves our legal disputes the way any independent nation should. While commending the local bar association for the conception of Law Week, Dr. Alexis also said that Dominica's founders ought to be commended as well for their foresight. When in the Independence Conference in London in May 1977, Premier Patrick John and opposition leader Mary Eugenia Charles slugged it out, decide in what form of independence you are to have here. They did you proud. 
because they show that they have the, the confidence in the people of Dominica that they were not going to take the country into independence under Her Majesty, who, adorable as Her Majesty is, nonetheless acquired a monarchy which presided over colonialism, imperialism, and pre-independence, not only in the Caribbean, but across the Commonwealth. And when your builders said they were going to move directly from pre-independence into having your own head of state, with your own kith and kin, living among you from day to day, they testify to the world that your country is well able to respect yourselves. Essentially, the Dominica's laws were created with total independence in mind. They put in there that when you come to have an act in this country, effectively to move out of the Privy Council, you're not going to require referendum approval. That majority referendum vote in the Constitution will not apply to a bill to alter what I call the Privy Council Appeals Clause. If the bill is going to give effect to an agreement between Dominica and the United Kingdom concerning appeals from any Dominican court to the Judicial Committee. Dr. Francis says this is not the case for many OECS countries, causing a technical hang-up in the reform process. Dr. Alexis is a former Attorney General of Grenada. The lecture took place at the Dominica State College on Thursday, June 5th. In more news, Adult Education Officer Martha Andre is urging members of the public to make use of the marketable skills courses being offered by the Adult Education Division. The division, located in Kennedy Avenue in Roseau, aims to motivate and stimulate participation of persons in the community. In an interview with GIS News on Tuesday, Martha noted that part of the mandate of the Adult Education Division is to teach others basic numeracy and literacy skills to promote sustainable development. We have the responsibility for um, providing every citizen with um, basic literacy, numeracy, entrepreneurial skills leading to sustainable development, trying to meet the economic means of every individual. She also stated that although formal education is important, it should not be relied upon as the sole area of income. It is a part of our mandate. It's one way of bringing about um, that assistance to people that they can, you know, do something for themselves. They can use their hands. And we have to let people know that, you know, it's not just the academic skills that are important, but we need those vocational skills to perhaps better run our homes, um, to assist us with earning a living. Sometimes the office job doesn't do it all. If you have something extra, you know, it comes in handy to help to pay the bills and whatever maintenance you need to provide. The Adult Education Officer revealed further that entrepreneurial literacy plays a big role in equipping individuals to face the challenges that come with establishing a business. The Adult Education Division, um, our main state is literacy numeracy. Literacy numeracy. But literacy goes beyond reading and writing. So therefore we again look at entrepreneurial literacy where persons come and learn a skill and put that skill into action to develop themselves and to be able to gain a living out of it. In other news, the Dominica Grammar School opened a contemporary art exhibition on Wednesday, June 4, where the creative pieces of the students were displayed all over the school grounds. Colette Ambo brings us this report. The Dominica Grammar School has been transformed into a contemporary art museum. The institution is hosting a contemporary art exhibition during the month of June. 
When the exhibit opened on Wednesday morning, June 4th, viewers were surprised to see that the entire school was turned into an artwork with creative pieces blended into the environment, popping up at unexpected corners. Marvin Fabian, art instructor at the grammar school and practicing contemporary artist himself, told GIS that this feature is characteristic of modern contemporary art. It's very important in contemporary that the, the, the art takes, it's part of the environment, because the environment is also has a history. So um, that we take that into consideration and, and also that children like space. And space is something that usually, um, you know, all the artists don't use. They like the, the, the paintings on a wall or, you know, a drawing. But that kind of art is three-dimensional. It's happening in, in the space around you, which, which is very important because issues and problems happen in the space around you. So you have to try as an artist to affect the public directly. The students' work on display is both contemporary and conceptual. According to Fabian, they aim to tackle current global issues in a creative way. The art itself, um, they have many different themes. And one may be, um, for example, the African girls across uh, um, who were captured um, in Nigeria. And um, we decided to work on that because that was a world issue and we look at that um, contemporary as world issues. So the children um, decided they wanted to use women with their hands up in handcuffs and we painted the, the, the women in red to represent danger, okay? And um, we also put the, the handcuffs as the color of the Nigerian flag, which was um, green and white and green. So we put them behind the fence to portray that, you know, they're behind the fence, they've been captured. So, and that was um, one of the ideas that um, we were trying to um, get across using um, um, that, that, that um, installation. From promoting education to speaking out against drug abuse, no issue was left unaddressed. Fabian said the students themselves were very passionate about working on this project because of the approach to art. It was all hands-on, dirty work, which required great mobility and lots of thinking. We worked on unemployment. We created the piece where people, when they are unemployed, the symptoms or issues they get is people drinking and smoking and they're overweight and they commit suicide and stuff. We spray painted it on paper and then sticked it around the school to make it look to pull the people together and show them what unemployment, what it brings when people are unemployed. The sky and the people we use paint and uh, we use like we had to call it, it's cardboard to cut letters to make the to make um, to spray it on it for Dominica Grammar School Contemporary Art Day and uh, we use glitter dust to um, decorate so you can like light up the letters. Rachel's favorite part was splashing the color onto the fabric. That was like really more like the highlight of the thing, like it that make it really make the banner outstanding. Fabian believes contemporary art is a good medium for young persons to not only express themselves, but to develop important intellectual skills. It's going to benefit them a lot because they have to think outside the box. And they have to understand that with the expression of, of art. Um, there comes an involvement in the territory, the space around you. An artist is somebody who critics and also criticizes what he sees around him. So you cannot just um, be in a little box and, you know, you have to say something, you have to show something, you have to be somewhere to, to be an artist in today's world. It is Fabian's hope that more persons will come on board to help turn this project into an annual event which will incorporate more schools. The exhibit will be open until June 20th. Reporting for GIS News, I am Colette Ambo. Thank you, Colette, for that report. A charitable organization under the umbrella of the Dominica Cancer Society has given back to the Ministry of Health. A $5,000 check was presented to the Ministry of Health on Thursday. Tina Alexander, Secretary of the Dominica Cancer Society, explains. These funds were specifically donated in recognition 
that the new t CT scanner will cost money to maintain. Many of our members have had to go overseas for CT scans and it's cost an arm and a leg. And that was happening when the CT scanner was down and also when in, the in the time when it was uh, being installed. But so we, so we well understand how much it costs. And in fact, $5,000 would send one person and a caregiver uh, overnight for one night to Barbados, Antigua or St. Lucia to have a scan. So we recognize this is a token. Uh, but now the new scanner is up and running and we're rejoicing. The Dominican patients access scans for a tenth of this cost and those under 18 and over 65 are free. And that's not an advert, that's a truth. And we're really pleased to be Dominican. CT scan services resumed at the PMH earlier this month with the purchase of a new $1.7 million scanner. The $5,000 donation came from the Cancer Society's Because We Care organization. It represents the donations in the shops that you've seen. You've seen these brightly coloured buckets with hummingbirds on. That's us. And they were in a number of different shops and pharmacies. And uh, we collected that money together, together with some donations from um, a number of uh, the corporate donors. Uh, Jolly's Pharmacy, Jay's Booksaw, Harris Paint, Sagicor, Doasco, Fort Young, Garraway Enterprises, Central Cooperative Credit Union, West Coast Credit Union, and Archipelago. That's not bad. These are our Because We Care partners. The society says it welcomes new Because We Care partners to help make a difference in the lives of Dominica cancer patients. Health Minister Honorable Julius Timothy pledged his business support as a partner and said thank you on behalf of his ministry and the PMH. We are very appreciative of the token, the, just the, 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 the gesture, because we've just, just put, it, put in the new city scanner, state of the art. Our older one was giving us a lot of trouble and we have replaced it. And, you know, I want people to understand. As Tina said, for us to go to Barbados to get a CT scan costs us $5,000. But more than that, in Antigua, the cost for a CT scan, forget all the travel and the hotel, the cost in Antigua is $1,700. In St. Lucia, the cost is $1,500. In Dominica, we charge only $500. The Labour Party government supports the Domga Cancer Society with a subvention of $30,000 annually. The Ministry of Agriculture has revamped its efforts in the fight against black cigatoka. This was revealed during the press conference held by the Ministry on Thursday. According to Head of the Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit, Ryan Ansem, in the fight against black cigatoka, sanitation is key. Hence, the ongoing measures by the Ministry to eliminate abandoned fields. The Ministry of Agriculture has always said, in tackling black cigatoka, sanitation is the number one principle. In Dominica presently, um, we have approximately 350 abandoned fields that include banana and plantain. So in the month of June, these 28 individuals that have been employed will be in the fields eliminating these abandoned fields. He also noted that the elimination of these fields can curb the spread of black cigatoka to healthy fields. Ansem revealed that the ministry has prepared a draft strategic action plan for the banana and plantain subsector. We have also prepared a draft action plan, a strategic plan of action for the banana and plantain subsector. This is in draft form. The next step is to meet with major stakeholders and farmers, of course, to, to really sensitize everybody of that plan. The ministry has also been working with other agencies to establish banana planting zones as well as to acquire resistant strains of bananas. Part of this strategy really is to zone banana production, bring in the resistant varieties and of course quarantine areas and sensitize and train people 
in, in terms of these resistant varieties. So again, that plan of action has been developed and moving forward, it, we have to sensitize the farmers and everybody in um, really how to produce these uh, resistant varieties. The head of the Plant Protection and Quarantine Unit reminded the public that the nation should not only focus on black cigatoka, but view the banana industry holistically. We have issues of low productivity, um, so we have to bring the necessary inputs and alternative cheap input that is, so our farmers can afford to, to grow bananas and, 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 and still have a livelihood and um, maintain their the, the, the source of um, income and we can export and um, look at ways that we can add value to banana and planting. And Sam Fuller revealed that there will be an implementation of a task force chaired by the Director of Agriculture. Kadisha St. Louis is up next for a recap of this week's headline stories. Welcome to this week's edition of Flashback. In the headlines this week, the Health Ministry, in collaboration with the World Bank, revealed plans to launch a result based financing option for healthcare to combat the increase of chronic non communicable diseases in Dominica. The National Development Foundation of Dominica, as part of its mission to reduce poverty, made donations to three charitable institutions this week. The Greater Home for the Homeless, Chances and Reach. The NDFB also launched a challenge to local Facebook users to show love for the organization and win a prize. The Government of Dominica declared Wednesday, June 4th as an official day of mourning as a mark of respect for the late Mary Davis Peer, former Speaker of the House of Assembly. Her body was laid to rest on Wednesday, June 4th at the Roseau Catholic Cemetery. Also this week, the government of Dominica pledged $500,000 towards the ongoing renovation of the Roseau Roman Catholic Cathedral. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has dismissed as gossip and rumor mongering reports that the Dominica Labour Party commissioned a poll which revealed only eight short seats for the ruling party. Also, the Prime Minister says the public will soon be informed about progress made thus far in its plans to construct an international airport. And the Ministry of Agriculture announced this week that assistance from the Food and Agriculture Organization has made it possible for an integrated pest management strategy to aid in the fight against the Black Sigatoka. Those were the headline stories which made the news this week. Back to you, Mervyn. Coming up next, your tip of the day. What's the dinner? I know, but you want Cheryl. Cheryl? Oh, babes, that's nothing. Nothing? With the neighbor that is nothing? Huh? Oh, whatever. You know you're my number one. And she's number what? Ten? Plenty married women getting ears from the husband these days. I don't want to be one of them. From now on, I'm looking out for me. Oh, babes, I only talk to the woman. Until I'm certain, this will take care of both of us, if you're lucky. Your family depends on you. Don't take home babes. In-studio discussions, insight, Creole news, Road to the Throne, Calypso, Creole Festival, Carnival, and lots more local programming. See it all on the Government Information Service, your first for local news. The weight that's right for you depends on many factors, including your sex, height, age, and heredity. Excess body fat increases your chances for high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, some types of cancer, and other illnesses. But being too thin can increase your risk of osteoporosis, menstrual irregularities, and other health problems. If you're constantly losing and regaining weight, a registered dietitian can help you develop sensible eating habits for successful weight management. Regular exercise is also important to maintain a healthy weight. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at www.news.gov.dm. 
friend us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GIS News Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. Have a great weekend.